y'all it's robin also known as ro and i am back again with another video so i'm here today to talk to you guys and to answer many questions so i've been receiving tons and tons of questions on my other crime scene and video sorry crime scene videos more specifically the 10 things i wish i knew before i became a crime scene investigator video so today i have my laptop here with me and i'm going to go through and i'm going to read a bunch of questions um and i'm going to go ahead and answer them uh, I do not have my contacts in, nor do I have my glasses on, so I have to look very closely. Don't judge me. But yeah, I got all the answers coming up for you guys. So if you are interested in learning more about crime scene investigation and having maybe some of your questions answered, then stay tuned. Okay, so for the first question, I'm not saying people's names, uh, but for the first question, someone asks, can I be a detective with a forensic science degree? Um, can you be a detective with a forensic science degree? So in order to be a detective, I answered this in another uh, video, you have to go to police academy first, at least for all of the police stations or police departments that I know of. In order to be a detective, you have to first be a police officer. So yes, you may become a detective with a forensic science degree, but you have to have your uh, peace officer license. Um, so you need to go to police academy first. Um, and then having that forensic science degree is also good. Um, it could help you out. It could benefit, uh, you know, benefit you and set you apart from other candidates because uh, to become a police officer, you may not need a degree you, or you may not need a four-year degree, but a forensic science degree is a four-year degree unless you just get a forensic science certification. So either way, that could help you out. So I say go for it. Next question. Okay, so someone said, I just came across your video and I needed to see this uh, what? And I needed to see this. I went back to school to finish my degree. Once the pandemic hit, I recently graduated with my associates in criminal justice technology, but it's been finding, but it's been hard finding a job, even getting an interview. My background is clean and I have a great work history, but where I live, uh, but where I live and anywhere, even if they don't require experience or education, I'm starting to have doubts about this because I'm starting to think I'm not fit because of how I look. I wanted to push for my bachelor's, but I'm not sure if I could continue down this road. Um, I'm not 100% sure how to answer this. Um, if you don't think that you're fit, you don't think that you're a good fit because of how you look. Um, police departments should not discriminate based on how someone looks. Um, now, if you have a whole bunch of tattoos or something, then that's one thing. But tattoos can be covered up with a uniform. Um, and then that would have to be stated also in their guidelines. Or if you have any inappropriate tattoos that, that can't, uh, you know, be seen while you're working, then that's one thing. But to just dis discriminate based on how you look, like your natural features, I don't necessarily think that that would be or should be a problem. Um, having your associates in criminal justice uh, is a good start. I do suggest getting a, you know, going ahead and getting your bachelor's. Um, if you are planning, if you are in the process of getting your associate's degree, there's nothing wrong with that, but you want to make sure that you have a certification behind you or, uh, or also go ahead and get your bachelor's in something such as like a physical science or forensics specifically. Um, and that's going to help you out a lot more. Um, and vice versa. If you have a a bachelor's in criminal justice then you want to go ahead and get like certified in forensics some way somehow see if your uh, school has that program has a certification program in forensics or take an online certification take some classes uh, you need to do something because you want to have some type of forensic background to help you out so I don't know if that really answered that question um, that was more like a paragraph so I'm really not sure if I answered your question well but I hope I did hopefully that was helpful Okay, not that one. All right, someone has a, oh, that's a good question. Someone said, question, do you get nightmares? And how do being in a scene where children are victims affect you? Is it difficult to handle your emotions in cases like that? For example, I can't imagine for the CSI that go into these school shootings. Um, that is a very, very good question. So one, do I get nightmares? Uh, the question is no, I do. Well, I, I get nightmares, but not about, I don't get nightmares often. And it's never about a crime scene. I've never had a, uh, a nightmare about a crime scene before. So that's a plus. Um, and how do being how does being in a scene where crime, where children are victims affect you? Okay, so I said this in another video that I've been to crime scenes where babies and kids were killed or injured, and it never affected me. Um, that was before I was a mother. Um, I have not. I told you guys I quit my job as a crime scene investigator, so I'm speaking in past tense um, and how or in how I think I would feel if I were to get back into it now. Now that I'm a mom, I have a one year old daughter. Um, 
I don't know how it would affect me if I went to a crime scene and I saw a child um, killed. I think that would probably affect me more than seeing a child injured. Um, seeing a child injured, I would probably, you know, probably be easy, but seeing a child killed, um, that would probably hurt me to do. And that's just because um, now when I see, even when I see videos of, of like a child in danger or a child crying or something like that, I automatically I'm in like mommy mode and I'm like, oh my gosh, like that's somebody's child. Oh, that's somebody's baby. So I think it would, I think it would probably hurt, um, you know, to see that. And is it difficult to handle your emotions in cases for that? Um, it was never, when I did it, it was never hard for me to handle my emotions um, because you really just cut your emotions off when you get to a scene and that's for any scene. The only time um, I was emotional really about a scene was the one that I did the story time on, the part one and part two, part one and part two of uh, why I became a crime, I mean, why I quit being a crime scene investigator. And um, yeah, so that scene, when they when I basically watched the uh, fire department allow someone to die, which in my opinion, they basically killed him with their actions or lack thereof. That was the only time that um, that I actually got emotional about a crime scene. Yeah. So uh, moving forward, I th or basically, I think that I probably would now be a little bit more emotional towards kids versus what I used to be. Okay, looking at some more comments. I'm not going to be answering every single comment. So if you left a comment on here um, for me and I don't answer, I'm getting to the ones that are like the most recent. But if I skip, if I skip your uh, question, it's because either I've already answered it or I don't understand it. <laughs> Someone said, thanks. Now I'm sure I don't want to do this after they watch my uh, video. The 10 things I wish I knew about being a crime scene investigator. <laughs> my goal is not to make anybody not want to be a crime scene investigator because honestly being a crime scene investigator was a very good job um I really the only thing that I hated about the job was the harassment that I had started going through and that was like issues with the manager um and you know like that those type of issues issues more so in the office it wasn't I didn't really have it I did not have an issue with going to scenes and doing the actual work the issue was in the office and that's the biggest reason why I could why I quit that job so I don't want people to not want to do crime scene Pete, you, you know crime scene investigation is a is a highly competitive field there's always going to be a job out there um to do like you're always going to be able to find a crime scene investigator position because it's a highly needed field it's not going anywhere um and it's like just a high, you know, revolving door. Like people do it, they, they go in, they come out, they go to one station, they then they leave that department, go to another. So it's like, you're always gonna be able to find a job in crime scene investigation. You just really have to look for it. So do not let my videos deter you from being a crime scene investigator. If you really wanna do it, go for it. Okay, so let's see. Someone said, hey, I love your video. Very educative, or I guess they meant educational. I have a degree in criminal justice and a degree in education as well. Due to economic reasons, I ended up being a teacher, but deep down, I want to become a crime scene investigator. Like, that's all I want to do. Um, look, I don't know where you live, <laughs> but in some places, you can make more money as a teacher than as a crime scene investigator. So, um, not to put you off, again, I'm not trying to deter anybody from being a crime scene investigator, but if you honestly, if you really, really want to be a crime scene investigator, take a year or so off of teaching because teaching, you're doing that, you know, as a, like, that's contract, that's contractual work. So, you can take time off from teaching and then come back to it later. Um, I don't suggest taking off lots of time. Make sure you still do all your professional development and stuff that you need to get done, but, uh, if you want to be a crime scene investigator or see what it's like, then go ahead, go be a crime scene investigator for a year and see if you like it. And if you don't, then go, you know, go back to teaching. At least you have a backup plan. And that's something that a lot of people, when they enter into crime scene investigation or they enter into the forensics field, if they decide, you know, they go through so much schooling for it um, and get their degree for it. And they may not have like a backup plan. Like you've got to have a backup plan. You have to know like, okay, if I don't like this, I went through school for this. This is what I learned. This is what I learned to use for my career. What am I going to do in case it, this does not work out? You have to have a backup plan. So I think that, you know, having your teaching career is great on this, um, you know, on the side or, you know, just as your second, like that's your plan B. So um, 
but go for it. If you want to be a crime scene investigator, see what it's like. Go ahead. Don't be scared. Um, it's never it's never the wrong time to change careers and change back. Do it. Yep. So that's my advice. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. <laughs> Someone said, I've been interested in criminology and it's great that there's people like you to educate us and give us a different perspective of how this works. You're welcome. That's what I'm here for. Sorry, y'all. There's actually like tons of comments and I'm trying to read through all of them because some people are just saying stuff and not necessarily asking questions. So I'm trying to get to the ones with the questions. Okay, here's one. Someone says... I'm about to start the process for my bachelor's of science in criminal justice and they have a focus in crime scene investigation. Would you recommend this being the correct degree to go into to go into to become a crime scene analyst? I only ask because I've seen many degrees focusing on forensics. I assume that will play into this degree though. Um yes. Okay, so you're getting a bachelor's in criminal justice with a focus on crime scene investigation. I think that that is a great degree to i think that's a great route to take if you want to become a crime scene analyst so for those who don't know a crime scene analyst is a type of crime scene investigator um some departments call them crime scene analysts some say crime scene technicians some say crime scene investigator it's all the same thing it, some departments they just differentiate between the type of scenes that you go to um or how long you've been working there um if you you know you go to uh more difficult scenes. Um, it just really just depends on the police department, but it's a crime scene investigator. So starting off, like I said before, as a uh, with a criminal justice degree, if you have a focus on crime scene investigation, I think that's perfect. Um, pre preferably, I think that the de departments actually prefer science science based degrees. Um, so I would say if you're doing the criminal justice with a focus on crime scene investigation, I think the focus will be more so on the process of crime scene investigation and not necessarily the science of forensics. So if you understand what I mean, I think that you should also probably go for maybe minor in a science or minor in forensics if you can do that as well. I think that would be even more beneficial if you have a bachelor's in criminal justice with a focus on crime scene investigation and a minor in forensics. Ooh. They gonna eat you up. They are going to want to hire you. So I think that that's what you know. You should probably try to do that. All right. Let's see. Someone said <laughs> this is a job for a Scorpio, Virgo, or Aquarius, and that is so funny because I'm a Scorpio. That's hilarious. And someone said it's a job for everyone, which it is. It is a job for everyone. Obviously, there are crime scene investigators who aren't just Scorpios, Virgos, and Aquarius. Um, okay, someone said, "Will majoring in criminology help me get a crime? Help me get a job as a crime scene investigator?" I saw this comment multiple times. Like different people ask, "Can they major in criminology to help them get a job as a crime scene investigator?" And yes, you can major in criminology. So um, my husband actually majored in in criminology, and uh, like my major was forensic biology, his was criminology. Um, so he, me, and him met at the police department we met when we were both working in crime scene so he got a job as a crime scene investigator with his degree in criminology but he is now a police officer he's no longer a crime scene investigator now he's a sworn police officer so um yes yes you can get a job as a crime scene investigator with that degree someone said hey bro are you going to these crime scenes alone or are you with a team thanks so much okay so um it depends on the scene um i think i spoke about this in another video so if you're going to like a lower level scene like um a crime against a property not a crime against person if you're going to a crime against property like burglary of a motor vehicle or burglary of a residence um or a theft like criminal mischief stuff like that um basically a scene where nobody is put into danger into direct danger um those you're definitely going to alone now if you're going to a crime against a person it just depends on how big the crime is or how you like how bad the crime was or whatever for example if you're going to an assault uh let's say if you're going to a domestic violence assault or something to go take photographs of a victim you're doing that by yourself if you're going to the hospital to take pictures of a child who was abused you're doing that by yourself if you're going to if you're going to somewhere to take pictures of a police officer who was assaulted you may be it may be you and a supervisor you know like or uh if there was a homicide there should be more than one crime scene investigation i mean crime scene investigator so it really just depends on the um 
the type of scene that it is. Um, when I work like major cases, like major crime scenes, um, like police officer involved shootings, it would be me and like three, four other people there, um, three, four other crime scene investigators, because, you know, you got to give everybody, like everybody has to help in some way, make sure everything is done, nothing is missed. Um, and it's like, you know, just more heavily scrutinized. So you, you need, there are extra steps that you have to take um, in bigger scenes. So it really just depends. Okay, somebody said, this is a very good question. Do you get paid for going to court on your days off? Uh, you know what? <laughs> I was about to say no, but I'm going to take that back real quick. It's not, I'm not even going to say no. It depends, okay? Because I'm not a crime scene investigator no more. And do you think I still got to go to court? Absolutely. I am still being called to court. I literally just spoke to a, um, a DA last week and I have to, I have a, a, a meeting tomorrow with an with a, with a attorney um, for a case that I worked for, a murder that I did. Um, not that I did <laughs> a murder uh, scene that I processed. Um, and I have court, I have a, a scheduled court date in August. I have another scheduled court date in October. Um, I had, I had a scheduled court date a few months ago and that was a Zoom court uh, trial for a major case that I worked a few years ago that they're trying to appeal and all this stuff. So it's like now that I'm no longer a crime scene investigator, I'm not really getting paid for it, but I, I can get paid for it. Um, I should be getting paid for it actually. And I think I'm gonna have to start telling them to run me my money because I'm working for free. But you know what? It's all good because I'm doing it. Uh, this That's something that I love to do. And, um, you know, I loved when I was a crime scene investigator. I just, you know, the way that I left, it was just because of a lot of political stuff. So, um, but when you are working as a crime scene investigator, do you get paid to go to court on your days off? The answer is yes, you absolutely do. Um, that is considered overtime. You're going to put in a time card. I put them time cards in so quick. I make sure I put in my time my little uh half an hour to drive up there to court half an hour to drive back home from court and two hours minimum while i'm there even if i'm only there for 30 minutes at court best believe i'm getting two hours on that time card because that's what we were told to do so if you go to court you have to at minimum you're putting in two hours um on your little time card so you get at least minimum three hours i believe of court time is it one hour minimum or two something like that you yes you do get paid uh for court so yeah all right let's see what else someone said how many years do it take to go to school to become a crime scene investigator so for me it took me just four years because i started i became a crime scene investigator after i graduated with my bachelor's degree so i started after four years but some people become crime scene investigators um, after they do their master's degree, which would be an additional two years. So that's six years. But on the other hand, there are some older crime scene investigators who started as police officers and didn't even have college degrees. So they may just have like associate's degrees or they may just have like some college credit, but not an actual degree. So it really just depends on the era that you came in um, and or what the what that department requires. So, yeah. Someone said, can I be a CSI with an associate in criminal justice? I already answered that. Someone says, can I marry you, please? What did you major in? And, okay, what did you major in and what school did you go to? I already said I majored in forensic biology. The school I went to, I went to Delaware State University, the illustrious Delaware State University in Dover, Delaware. It was an H It is an HBCU, the best HBCU. Um, on the East Coast. So yeah, and also one of the only HBCUs with a forensics program that was close to where I was from. So I didn't have to go super far from home. Um, but it was far enough where my parents wouldn't, you know, be up there every single weekend visiting me. You know, I wanted to be away from family, um, away from home, but close enough to still go back whenever I wanted. So yes, Dell State Forensic Biology. And now I have my master's degree from Stevenson University, which is in Maryland. Um, yeah, Stevenson University, my master's degree is in crime scene investigation. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. I'm definitely going to have to do a part two because I didn't get through a lot of questions at all. Um, but I know this video is getting real lengthy. So I'm going to go to the last thing I'm going to read. Um, it says, I'm majoring in criminal investigation and I like it but I'm not passionate about it. Plus, I'm very emotional. This is the type of job you have to be unemotional and mentally strong, especially being able to see a dead body or dealing with cases involving children. Um, so that's not a question, it's a statement, but I would like to respond to it. Um, 
I don't want to, I don't want anyone to think that you have to be completely unemotional to do this job. That is not true. Um, I'm an emotional person. I was a much more emotional person when I was a crime scene investigator um, compared to compared to how I am now. I'm less emotional now compared to how I was back then. Um, so as a crime scene investigator, you learn how to shut your emotions off when you get to a scene or when you're on your way to a scene, like, cause you know, you got a job to do. And I've said in previous videos that whenever I did my, uh, whenever I went to crime scenes, it honestly, when I was like looking at a dead body or something, they never seemed like they were real. They seemed like they were movie props. So it never really affected me emotionally, um, until my cousin got, my, my cousin got killed and one of my close friends from back home got killed. So, um those were the only times it had become emotional for me and then when i seen that the guy uh get killed by the uh the fire department in front of me those were the only times it had ever been emotional and i was a crime scene investigator for five and a half almost six years so um you can be an emotional person and be a crime scene investigation and be a crime scene investigator you learn how to control it you you have to you have first of all you have to have self-control second of all you learn how to control your own emotions but you, as a human being you know how to control your emotions if you don't you're not going to be able to have any type of job so um yes that's about it um I really do appreciate all of the questions and comments that I receive on a daily basis. And I know I do not get a chance to respond to all of them um, or even half of them. And I really do apologize about that. I have a lot going on. You guys know I have a one year old now. Um, I'm also teaching. I'm also doing my floral business. Like there is a lot going on. So I don't get a chance to respond all the time, but I will sit down and start trying to go through these um, comments more and do more videos like this um answering questions and uh doing just do doing more sit down videos for a crime scene investigation for a crime scene investigation because i know that's what y'all want to see so yeah if i got any more questions or comments or anything that you want me to answer in a in my next video go ahead drop it down in a comment below uh or on one of my other uh crime scene videos and i'm gonna try to get to it in my next video so thanks so much i'll talk to y'all later bye Oh, and I forgot to tell y'all, hit that subscribe button on your way out. Bye.